something that resembles porcelain, should really be alive and have a certain resonance. I feel personally it's very important to use only hand tools as electronic tools with high vibrations tend to destroy the cell structures. And also I feel if the wood's alive, you're in some way hurting the wood with the high vibrations. When doing the joints, I like to use the traditional rope joint using animal glue. This was what they used in the 17th century. For all the jobs I do, I try and stick as much to the way Stradivari made his violins. For all the carving, we are using gouges to carve out the rough back. And that way you get a feel for the wood, the texture, the density which is very important because at a later date you will be using what you felt when you were carving the wood for thicknessing it. One unique thing that I do, because I live in South Africa, is take the wood as it's roughly been carved and leave it in the sun. This way it stabilizes, it moves and it twists and it does everything that it would normally do once the instrument was finished. Therefore the final product is really uh, very stable and tends to reach maturity a lot quicker. The sun enlivens it and gives it a certain energy as well as breathing in all the different climatic changes the wood tends to be more suited to playing in all environments all over the world. I like to use South African wood for the inlay, making the dark wood from stink wood and the inner wood from uh, maybe an ash or something. When the points of the inlay come together, I like them to resemble a bee sting at the very tip, so I make the outside black a little bit longer. This way it just accentuates the curve of the, of the inner bout. The shaping of the wood is very important for the tone and also for the strength. Ideally, you want the violin to be as light as possible and as strong as possible. I'm adjusting my thicknessing for every single piece of wood as opposed to making them all the same thickness. This way, you tend to aim for a particular type of sound. work to an accuracy of about one-tenth of a millimeter. What you want is a balance or a harmony between the back and the front of the violin. And what I tend to do is I like to feel it in my hands, I like to bend it for a flexibility, and I like to tap it and listen for a sound, not a, not a particular note, but a pure sound, very rich in, in quality. interested in violin making when still at school after reading a book written in about 1890 by a man called Heron Allen. It's a very romantic book and it really inspired me as well as having a love for classical music, particularly string music. The thickness of the rib is about 1.1 millimetre and it's very important the thickness of the ribs. I mean even a tenth of a millimetre really makes a big difference to the actual bending and also the strength. If the ribs are too thick, you will find you will mute the sound. If they were too thin, they will collapse. That's very important. I like to look at violin making as taking a tree that was once living, 
The wood I use is sometimes over 100 years old and transforming that tree into a new life, this time with a voice that can sing. carving the scroll, I like to refer to nature for my inspiration. Looking at shells and studying their shape gives me a better understanding how the curves relate to each other. I personally don't like to use too many templates, thus giving each one an individual characteristic. We carve the scroll entirely from a solid block of wood. We use a Japanese saw which actually cuts backwards with very, very fine teeth. It's extremely useful and different shaped gouges. Most violin makers use their hands as vices because of the shape of the wood is very difficult to clamp 